chapter 10 due to some printer difficulties. We will not have our next message in the Neglected Series Doctrine or the Neglected Doctrine Series Sermon. So Luke chapter 10, a familiar passage of Scripture, uh, I'm sure. And I'll read verses 38 through 42. Now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village and a certain woman named Mary received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, or a, named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. But one thing is needful, and Mary hath chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. May we look to our Lord now in a word of prayer. I ask, Heavenly Father, that you be with us as we come before thee, as we thank thee for who you are and what you've done in our lives. Father, I ask that you would help us to remain focused upon you, that our, our lives would be centered upon the Lord Jesus Christ, that we're not distracted with the cares and the wonders and the, and the things of this world, that it overshadows <clears throat> our focus upon you. I ask, Lord, that you would be with us as a church, that you would help us to grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And Father, as we think about uh, you know, the things that are necessary to keep the, the purity of the church, Lord, that you would uh, direct us in that, that thy will would be done, that we would uh, glorify you in all things. I ask, Father, that you would be with me this morning as thy servant, that you would give me liberty and ability to preach thy word in truth and in love. I ask, Father, that if there are any here this morning that are lost and undone and know you not as Savior, that this would be the day of salvation. They come to knowing the full pardon and forgiveness of sin. I ask, Lord, that you would lead us all, guide us in the ways that are right and pleasing in thy sight. And these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Title of the message this morning, Sat at Jesus' Feet sat at Jesus' feet. So Mary and Martha, we, we've heard the text, we've read the text, we've heard the text preach, <clears throat> and yet we still battle with focusing upon the Lord Jesus Christ. A lesson for all of us today is to be at the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ. Beloved, we understand and we have met people in our lives that just seem to be so full of the Spirit of Almighty God that they, they resonate and they truly are that reflective light of Jesus Christ the Lord. And when we meet them, we say, man, they just, they emanate, they, they reflect Jesus Christ. That they have this walk, this pleasant walk with the Lord. I believe in order for us to be able to get to that place, we must spend time at the feet of Jesus. It's easy to become wrapped up in, in messages like the Neglected Doctrine series or to then even you know, come into a, a study like the book of Ephesians. And in the book of Ephesians, man, we're learning a lot. We're learning about the Lord Jesus Christ. We're learning about salvation. We're learning about election. We're learning about you know, how to walk with the Lord. And we can go through life, we can learn through the book of Ezekiel and learn how Israel was a very rebellious house and how they committed sin and idolatry and adultery against God. So, you know, I can get frustrated in the flesh and I can be, you know, frustrated in that I've said to the church, oh, we're going to preach the Neglected Doctrine series and we're going to get through these 20-something messages and if, you know, and, and I've committed this to you all and I wasn't here with you last week and so now you've gone two weeks without hearing any of these messages and I can get frustrated that the printer didn't work, but at the same time, when I, I immediately, when it didn't work, I thought about the fact 
Have we spent time with Jesus? Have we focused upon Him? Now we understand, and I know that the Bible says that we are to preach the entire or all preach all the counsel of God. Then that is the purpose. That is what I am to do. I am, you know, to pray about messages and to seek the leadership of the Lord and to guide the church. And, and God gives me that charge. And and so I'm to give you a well balanced meal. And I, and that's why we preach some of the hard stuff. And that's why we preach about prayer. And that's why we do these things. But but ultimately, my real responsibility is to tell you about Christ. To tell you about Jesus. About his life, his crucifixion, and certainly about his resurrection. We need to focus on Jesus Christ. And so, sure, the, the illustration of Mary and Martha is, is certainly familiar, but it is needful when we read these beautiful words that we, that we read here today in verse 39. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard His word. Let us sit at the feet of Jesus and hear His Word. After all, isn't that what we're looking forward to doing in all of eternity is sitting at the feet of Jesus and hearing His Word and hearing what He says to us. The Gospels mention a woman named Mary. Now understand that here in Luke 10, this is not the mother of the Lord Jesus. She was, this Mary is the sister of Lazarus and Martha. And this Mary is mentioned three times in the Gospel accounts. <clears throat> and every time Mary is mentioned, she is always found at the feet of Jesus. Her experiences there can teach us all some valuable lessons about our own walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. We will see... A place of stillness. Secondly, we will see a place of supplication. And yes, a place of service as we too sit at the feet of the Lord Jesus. Before I get into the meat of this message, about every year or so, and certainly as it comes to my mind, and it seems to be about every year or so, I like to read this portion of a sermon. Some of you already know that it's coming. Maybe some of you have never heard me do it. A portion of the sermon uh, by a preacher named S.M. Lockridge entitled, That's My King. I've read it to you before, and I've told you that uh, I would encourage you to listen to him actually preach his own sermon, or especially this part. It is extraordinarily powerful, and I can honestly listen to this every week. And, I, and I'm not just saying that because I want to read it to you again now, but every week I could listen to the power of how he preached about the king. And so... I want to begin this message. It wasn't a part of the original message. I don't know that I even started reading this at the time that the Lord originally gave me this message here in Luke uh, chapter 10. But to hear about the king that we want to sit at the feet of. That's why I'm tying it in together here. So again, I didn't write this. I enjoy reading it. I try to put a little of my personality in behind it. But it is, that's my king. The very well, and again, the one that we want to sit at the feet of and learn about. The Bible says he is the king of the Jews. He is the king of Israel. He is the king of righteousness. He is the king of the ages. He is the king of heaven. He is the king of glory. He is the king of kings and lord of lords. Folks, that's my king. David says the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament shows us his handiwork. No means of measure can define his limitless love. It is an everlasting love. 
It is a sacrificial love. It is an enduring love. No far-seeing telescope can bring into visibility the coastline of his shoreless supply. No barriers can hinder him from pouring out his blessing. He is enduringly strong. He is entirely sincere. He is eternally steadfast. He is immortally graceful. He is impartially or imperially powerful. And he is impartially merciful. Folks, that's my king. He is the very son of God. He is the sinner's savior. He is the centerpiece of civilization. He stands alone in himself. He is august. He is unique. He is unparalleled. He is unprecedented. He is supreme. He is preeminent. He is the loftiest idea in literature. He is the highest personality in philosophy. He is the supreme problem in higher criticism. He is the fundamental doctrine of true theology. He is the cardinal necessity of spiritual religion. He is king. He is the miracle of the age. He is the superlative of everything good. He is the only one to supply all our needs simultaneously. He supplies strength for the weak. He is always available for the tempted and the tried. He is full of compassion. He sympathizes and he is able to save. He guards and he guides. He heals the sick. He cleans the lepers. The lepers. Not the lepers. <laughs> and Jesus Christ and him alone forgives sinners. He discharges debtors. He delivers the captives. He defends the feeble. He blesses the young. He regards the aged like no one else. And he beautifies the meek. My king is the king of knowledge. He is the wellspring of wisdom. He is the doorway of deliverance. He is the pathway of peace. He is the roadway of righteousness. He is the highway of holiness. He is the gateway of glory. No man comes to the Father but through the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the master of the mighty. He is the captain of the conquerors. He is the head of the heroes. He is the leader of the legislators. No matter what we might think, he is still in charge and he is still on his throne. He is the overseer of the overcomers. He is the governor of governors. He is the prince of princes. He is the king of kings. And folks, he is the Lord of lords. His office is manifold. His promise is sure. His life is matchless. His goodness is limitless. His mercy is everlasting. His love never changes. His word is enough. His grace is sufficient. His reign is righteous. His yoke is easy and his burden is light. And S.M. Lockridge says, Folks, I wish I could describe him to you. I wish I could describe him to you, but he is indescribable. He is incomprehensible. He is invincible. He is irresistible when he makes himself known. Folks, the heaven and heavens cannot contain him, let alone a man such as you or I try to explain him. You cannot get him out of your mind, you cannot outlive him, and you cannot live without him. The Pharisees couldn't stand him, 
but they could not stop him. Pilate could not find any fault in him. The witnesses couldn't get their testimony to agree. Herod couldn't kill him. Death could not handle him. And the grave could not hold him. Folks, that's my king. He has always been, and he will always be. He had no predecessor, and he will have no successor. There was nobody before him, and there will be nobody after him. You cannot impeach him, and he's not going to resign. That's the king we serve. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. The glory is all his forever and ever and ever. And when you get through all the forevers, then amen. So that's my king. That is speaking of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is the one that we must spend our time getting to know. And spend our time at his feet. Well, Mary understood there was a place of stillness when at the feet of Jesus. It says, again here in verse 38, Now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named Mary received him into her house. And... She had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. Again, the context of what we're reading here is that Martha opened her home to the Lord Jesus and did her best to be a good hostess. Mary, on the other hand, we see opened her heart to the Lord Jesus and to love the Lord. Beloved, oftentimes we are more like Martha than Mary. In our zeal to serve the Lord, we wind up ignoring the Lord. The very king that I wrote or read about, the very king of the universe, the one who is deserving. Well, no, the one who we need to learn from. But Mary, here in the text, found a place of stillness at the feet of Jesus. In verse 40, again we're reminded, but Martha was cumbered about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she may help me. You see, beloved, when it comes to sitting at the feet of Jesus and hearing his word, remember that's the text which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard His Word, there is a time and a place that we can forget our cares. You see, while Martha was cumbered, that is, to be distracted or to be driven about mentally, Mary was sitting calmly listening to the words of the Lord Jesus. When we come into the presence of the Lord, whether it is in our own personal prayer life, whether it is in our Bible reading, or whether it is here in this worship service, we can come and forget, even if it is for just an hour, our cares and the burdens of life as we come to the feet of Jesus. It would do us well as God's children to learn to sit in the presence of God. To forget about the cares of the world. Now, I know that life is life. And I know that the cares of the world will be a part of life. I mean, you've got bills to pay, mouths to feed, places to go to work. There are the responsibilities of life. But let us not get so involved that we forget to sit at the feet of Jesus. That we forget to do as the Bible tells us in the book of Psalm, to be still and know that I am God. 
When you're at a Bible conference, when you're at a meeting, you are, you are putting aside those cares of the world even for just that amount of time to focus on Jesus Christ. Now notice, as she sat at the feet of Jesus, she heard his word. So when I preach about, you know, even for this moment of time to lay aside the cares, what we're not talking about is just, you know, doing nothing, even though, you know, I, I would say that there's a place for that sometimes, but it's not just about laying apart or laying aside the cares of this world to do nothing, it's about learning about the word of the Savior, our King, the King of kings and Lord of lords. But more often than not, we worry. We worry and we do not cast our cares upon the Lord. We worry about everything else than just sitting at the feet of the Lord Jesus. It would do us well to learn. To forget and to sit at this place of stillness. Where we can forget our cares, then we can also feed our souls at the word of the Lord. Again it says, and she had a sister called Mary, verse 39, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. Martha, Martha was worried over the physical nourishment while Mary was concerned with getting her soul fed. I've been to conferences, I've been to many different meetings, and one thing that always saddens me is that towards the end of, of, of a session, I'll see a lot of the ladies have to get up and to leave because they've then become concerned with feeding. What I understand there is that time of, of physical nourishment. But nobody has ever died of starvation at a Bible conference that I know of. I've never seen it. So let us not get so concerned with the serving that we don't get to hear and sit at the feet of Jesus to hear his word. There's a place for the serving. We understand and, and, and we do that every week. But, you know, I, I am very thankful that... We have come to the place that in our meetings, whether it is that we've built in time and, or whatever it is, but I would never want to encourage anyone to feel like they have to leave to not be fed the Word of God. After all, that's what we want to do. We want to come here to have our souls filled. You see, in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ is where we find food for our souls and strength for our journey. It is where these things come together and work together for good. It's, it's no wonder that many, that many children of God are, are weak and lacking spiritual energy, just like our food or our food, <laughs> just like our body needs physical food for energy, our spiritual soul needs food for spiritual energy to do the things of God. You have got to take time to feed your spiritual soul. That's why it's important to come to the house of the Lord. That's why it's important to be fed the word of God. But this is not the only time you should eat. This is not the only time that you should be sitting at the feet of Jesus. But I would certainly say that when you're in the house of the Lord, that you absolutely should have set the care of this world aside, even if it is just for an hour, to sit at the feet of Jesus, that your soul would be filled with the things of God, that your, your, your life, your physical body would be then encouraged and nourished to do the things of God. There is none better to learn about than Jesus Christ. Sit at the feet of Jesus. In 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15 it says, Stay 
Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That is, get in the word. And then as we enjoy this feeding of our souls and forgetting our cares, we can focus our priorities. Again, as we look upon this scene at Martha's home, we can see where Martha's priorities were and where Mary's. Martha was concerned with preparing the meal, and Mary was concerned about being in the presence of Jesus. And I've, I've said it over and over. We need to spend more time in the presence of the Lord. And if everything in our lives takes precedence over being with the Lord, then we need to reevaluate what's going on in our lives. Because, beloved, I will tell you, the, the more real the Lord is, the problems of this life, they just they, they seem so much smaller. So I ask, is sitting at Jesus' feet a priority in your life? We need to seek this place of stillness before the Lord. And then verse 42 says, But one thing is needful, and Mary hath chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. At Jesus' feet, Mary found fulfillment, and contentment. Amen. Fulfillment and contentment. What she found at his feet was worth more than all things that money in this world can buy. She found rest and contentment. Reminds me of the text in Matthew chapter 11. Now, this is just going to kind of tie in everything that I spoken about, about letting these cares go, even just for the time of the services or for the time of your, your prayer or the time of your Bible study, that we don't get so cumbered or distracted about all the stuff that needs to be done, but we focus on Jesus. And here's His promise to us. It says in Matthew chapter 11 and verse 28, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. Are any of you laboring? Do any of you feel heavy laden? Here's what God says. That king that I read about, that with all of our words, we can't even begin to describe him. Here's what he says. I will give you rest. Not I might. Not probably. But he says, I will. So he's talking to his children. He's talking to us that are laboring. He's talking to us that are burdened. He's talking to us that are downhearted. He's talking to us that live life. And he says, I'm going to give you rest. I believe that when we sit at the feet of Jesus and learn his word and, and hear his word, we, be, we, we begin to experience that rest. He says, to take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Sit at the feet of Jesus and learn his word, right? That's, that's what we're saying. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Sit at the feet of Jesus. That's what Mary found herself doing. She found herself in this place of supplication. It's the next part of the message that I want to bring out now. As we go, as we continue to think about sitting at the feet of Jesus, she came to this place of supplication. I want to now bring you over to John chapter 11 and bring another context of Mary's life into view here. All right, so again, Martha, very concerned. You're turning over to John chapter 11. Again, very, you know, I'd say familiar to most in here. But another aspect of Mary's life is what I want to bring out. So Martha, very busy, very concerned about the serving and, and not sitting at the feet of Jesus and learning. And again, that promise of God that we just read about in Matthew chapter 11. All ye that are burdened and heavy laden. You know, we cast that into the Lord and he says he'll give us rest. And we have this place of supplication that we read about in John chapter 11. We only, we'll only read a portion here. We'll just begin in verse 28. 
It says in John 11, 28, And when she had so said, she went her way and called Mary, her sister, secretly, saying, The Master is come and calleth for thee. As soon as she had heard that, she arose quickly and came unto him. Now Jesus was not yet come unto the town, but was in that place where Martha met him. The Jews then which were with her in the house and comforted her, when they saw Mary, that she rose up hastily and went out, followed her, saying, She goeth unto the grave to weep there. Then when Mary was come whereof Jesus was and saw her him, she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. Yeah. We see the second time that Mary fell at the feet of Jesus. She didn't have an understanding of what the Lord was doing there. We see that Martha again ran off, ran from the Lord. We see Martha again, she ran to the place, uh, what did it just say, either where Lazarus was or that town, yeah, there you go. No, she went to get married, that's right. And now uh, Jesus was not yet coming to the town, but was in that place where Martha met him. There you go. That's, I was right. Okay. Oh, that Martha went to the grave and wept there, but Mary again went to the feet of Jesus. That's where I was, that's where I was going. You understand that Lazarus, the brother of Martha and Mary, had died? And when he arrives, he meets Martha and calls for Mary to come to him. And so, as I said, once again, she is found at his feet, looking into his face for the help that she needs. Martha... Originally ran out to meet him, but then Jesus called for Mary. And the Lord Jesus Christ is concerned and cares for us deeply. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15. The Lord already knows about what you're going through. And he cares for us more than we could ever know. Hebrews 4.15 says, For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was at all points tempted like as we are yet without sin. Never think for an instant that God does not care for you. That is his child. It is the lie of the devil that the Lord Jesus Christ does not care for you. The Lord Jesus is able to give that rest. So even in the times of loss, as Mary is now going through the loss of her brother, she is sat at the feet of Jesus. She is again sitting at the feet of Jesus. What does that teach us? It teaches us not to neglect sitting at the feet of the Lord Jesus. Amen. That's what it teaches us. Humanly and in the flesh, it's easier to sit at the feet of the Lord Jesus right now. You're here, and I've asked you to put the cares of the world aside that you may be focused on the Lord Jesus and His Word. And then, in the event of a loved one dying, such as the case that happened here with Lazarus, human tendency is to run from God. Human tendency is to run from the Lord Jesus Christ and to blame God and to curse God and, and, and all of those things. And yet what we see here again is this beautiful example of Mary again running to the feet of Jesus. Now, she's still confused. If you'd been here, he had not died. So she's still confused, but she was at the right place. At least she was at the feet of Jesus. And it was there that the Lord was able to comfort Mary. It was there that the Lord was able to instruct and tell Mary why he has, was not there. And I won't get into all of that for this message. But she went to the right place. May we learn from this to always go to the feet of Jesus and to hear his word. <clears throat> Do not neglect that. Do not neglect going and sitting at the feet of the Lord Jesus now when things are going well. But do not also know, do not neglect going to the feet of Jesus when the storm comes. And the storm will come. The Lord Jesus Christ gave that intercession and He does the same for us today. 
In the book of Hebrews, again, verse or chapter 7 and verse 25. Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 25. Wherefore he is able also to save them to the othermost that come to God by him, seeing that he liveth to make intercession for them. He is able. That's what I wanted you to see. So let me encourage you. Let me tell you. Don't wait for the crisis to come to start sitting at the feet of the Lord Jesus. Sit there now and learn His Word. And now when the storm does come, you'll be well acquainted with sitting at the feet of Jesus. Kneeling at the feet of Jesus. Are you spending time at His feet calling out to Him? Jesus cares. Back in John chapter 12 now. Let me read to you this as I begin to draw this message to a close. In John chapter 12, I'll read to you these, these first eight verses. I think it's important. It says, Then Jesus, six days before the passing, or before the Passover, came to Bethany where Lazarus, which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. There they made him a supper. And Martha served, but Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. Then took Mary a pound of ointment of spiker, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Then saith one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him, Why was not this ointment sold for three hundred pence and given to the poor? Thus he said, not that, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the bag and bear that it was put therein. Then said Jesus, let her alone against the day of my burying. Has she kept this? For the poor always ye have with you, but me ye have not always. I preached an entire sermon a couple of years ago on extravagant love. We use this as our text here in John chapter 12, but for the, the purpose of this message, I won't get into all of the extravagant love that Mary showed out, but you notice again where she was. She was again at the feet of Jesus. She poured out this precious ointment before and onto the Lord's feet. The very place where she was when Martha invited him into her home, into their home. She sat at his feet and learned his word. Then at the very place that she was, when she was seeking that comfort and that counsel from the Lord, she was there again at his feet. And now she is anointing the feet of the Lord Jesus. There's something to it. Have we spent time with our Lord in this way? She gave up this treasure because of her love for the Lord Jesus. Mary, in these three instances, remember I talked about the three times I wanted to give you all of them this afternoon or this morning. She gave her best. She gave all to the Lord she loved. Beloved, we should do no less. We should give all to the Lord whom we love. May we give our best to the Lord Jesus. May we give the best for Him. May we not shortchange the Lord Jesus with our time or our tithe, our offerings, our talents. May we give it all to Him. Mary was willing to do the work of a common slave for the Lord Jesus. And she goes above and beyond. And so when we come to sit at His feet, when we get to the place where we don't, we don't care, those cares have been passed aside, that we are focused on Him, that we will serve Him in His glory and, and see Him in His glory. And so I ask you, where are you? May I encourage all of us to be at the feet of the Lord Jesus. To our King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Cast that burden unto the Lord and leave it there. Again, He promised to give us rest. I thank you for your attention to the Word of God. And if we can be helped to you anyway, we certainly offer ourselves to you.
Shall we stand together? We'll be dismissed in a word of prayer.